Hallelujah. 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 We read it in a, such a such a nice way. And in one of my Carmel, when uh, Elijah called in fire down, the Bible says it first consumed the water that Elijah put around the altar before it consumed the lamb, the sacrifice. We read it very casually and we look at it all. Oh, we focus on the fire that came down. But there's a significant in that. The water represents the Holy Ghost. The water represents what is the living water that lives inside of us. The scripture says, the living waters out of your belly, the living waters shall flow out. What he's talking about is, when the Holy Ghost fire comes upon us, it will come into communion with his own self. Not only will he bless us, but it is going to come in communion with himself. And the Lamb represents the Lamb of God, the sacrifice that was upon the cross. I hope you see the picture of our tonight God. The Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost became one upon the altar. The Father came down and consumed and became one with the Holy Ghost, became one with the Son, the Lamb of God, and they became the one God headship that they are together. And they proclaim on Mount Carmel what's supposed to be. There is so much typologies in the Old Testament of who God is and who Jesus Christ is and who the Holy Ghost is. We can't read it so casually over it and miss it. We need to understand it with the fullness that God has for us. In verse 4, King David writes that he sought the Lord for a solution for all of his trouble and found deliverance from all his fears. Allow the Lord to deliver you from all your fears by seeking him as the only solution for anything. My brothers, my sisters, sons and daughters of the Most High God, we ought to seek the Lord as our only solution for anything. We see too many times the opinion of men and the opinion of other others. We need to seek the Lord for all things and He will answer us with a perfect solution for all things. Do not try to deliver yourself with your own power or intellectuality. Inquire of the Lord and His authority and His power. Amen. Apostle Paul wrote, I did not come to you with superiority of speech, but in demonstration of the spirit of power. So your faith should not rest upon the wisdom of man, but on the power of God. Amen. Jesus is calling His church today. That we do not come in the superiority of our intellectuality, in the superiority of our speech and wisdom. Our wisdom will fail us. Our superiority will fail us. We have so much division in the body of Christ, so much denomination in the body of Christ for one reason. Because it's all about what man thinks and not what God thinks. We build denominations, we build different things for ourselves because we feel we got the truth. But as the Lord challenged us last week, it's not about what you know, but who He is. It's not about what you can do, but what He already done for us. The Lord, Jesus is challenging His church today that we will be all in love with Him more than anything else. In the 40th chapter of the book of Isaiah, God told him, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not disdained, dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteousness and with my right hand. 
We are fearful and we are weak without the Holy Spirit owning us. But when the Holy Spirit fills our lives and owns us fully, all fear, all weaknesses are replaced. It says in the first chapter of the second book of Timothy, verse 7, with his power and love and a sound mind. When the Holy Ghost owns us and we don't own him, he will fill us with the spirit of power and love and a sound mind. Organizations for many years use the Holy Spirit to build their own kingdom. And I refer to them as organization because the church of the living God would not use God and abuse God. Amen. Yes. They might have a title in front of the building says church. But a church is a church that is submissive to only the way of the Lord Jesus Christ. Organizations for many years use the Holy Spirit for building their own kingdom. Holy Spirit now is challenging and raising up the church that he will be used, that it will be used by him and owned by him to build God's kingdom in power. God is raising up the Iglesia. God is raising up the true Iglesia, the called out ones. He says, those who I will own and those who will be filled by me and those who will only do my will. God is calling in this hour his Iglesia out of religion and out of buildings. I know sometimes we come with things when God says, I will build my ecclesia upon this rock. We think that he was talking about the world. He was talking about actually about against the temple. He says, I am not going to build my church in the temple that does not know me. I will build my build my church upon the rock, upon the foundation of Jesus Christ. I'm going to build my church. I'm going to call my church out of the church in order to bring my kingdom forth. I hope you understand that this morning that God has a call out once that he's raising up and he's drawing them out and he's standing that they will stand in the boldness of the Holy Ghost for his, for his kingdom. The Lord is calling out. The Lord is calling out and raising up a church that is going to be used by him and owned by him and building God's kingdom in power. For the Bible tells us, for the kingdom of God has suffered violence and the violence was taken back by force. I know we know that scripture. The kingdom of God has suffered violence. The violence is taken by force. What force is he talking about? Which force took it back? The kingdom of God. The power of the Holy Ghost. It is not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. The Lord is reviving a church that is full of the Holy Ghost because his kingdom has suffered for too long in the hands of the religious folks, in the hands of those who are of an organization that have caused God to be suffering day after day after day. And God says, I had enough of the suffering of my kingdom in the hand of those who have a form of godliness but deny my power but now in these last hours I will pull out in my strength I will take back by force by my mighty force by my Holy Ghost power I will take back my kingdom one more time and establish my church before my return the Lord told me like how he told Ezekiel to prophesy this morning how Ezekiel prophesied to the dry bones he prophesied on the, uh, to them and said that they shall resurrect and be filled with spirit and I'm prophesying this morning on resurrection Sunday as the Lord had directed me that the church of the living God will resurrect in power and might the same Holy Spirit that rose Jesus from the grave will now own us individually and collectively and rise up the church that will bless the Lord at all times. Hallelujah. At all times. Hallelujah. He's raising up. He's raising up the church that will bless him and honor him and follow him wherever he goes. The 
that will allow the kingdom of God to manifest itself fully on earth as it is in heaven. God is taking back his kingdom that suffered violence, not just by the world, but by the organizations that call themselves church to own and use the Holy Spirit and not own, not owned by the Holy Spirit and used by the Holy Spirit. How do we practically do that? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Lord wants us to allow him to manifest his courage, his confidence, his eloquency, his wisdom through each and every vessel. He is tired of folks that know better. He wants to move with people who say, I do not know nothing. All I know is Jesus Christ crucified, rose again on the third day, filled us with the Holy Ghost power, and that's all I know. Paul says, I do not know anything else except that Jesus is my Lord. I do not know anything else by my own reason. All I know is that he is the King of glory, the Lord God Almighty. All I know is that he is strong in battle. All I know is that he is coming. Who is this King of glory? The Lord God Almighty in the battle. Who is he? The Lord God Almighty in the battle. Who shall see him? Those who are of clean heart and pure hands, they shall see the the King of glory. Oh, lift up your heads, all ye gates, and lift them up on high. See that the King of glory is coming. Look how the King of glory is moving in this hour. Hallelujah. 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 When we are feeling afraid, it is time to realize that we shall confess our sins of self-reliance. The reason in this hour the churches are closed down and living in fear behind Zoom meetings instead of standing on the streets and on corner of parks and preaching and opening up the doors and don't care what anybody will cause them to, to be afflicted is because there is fear and may I suggest because there is sin in their life. Sin will cause you to walk in fear. Sin will cause you to hide away because if your sin has been discovered, you will be finished and done. So you don't want to rattle the boat too much, Frankie, because if you rattle the boat too much, your sins will be exposed by those who are against God. But if you have no sin in your life and you're walking upright before the Lord in the righteousness of His glory, you don't care how much you're going to rattle the boat because you know nobody can come against you in accusation. And we will look into it in a few seconds. Too many people are crying burdens that God did not intend them to be bearing. Many people are carrying burdens that God did not intend them to bear. Let fear be like a warning light on your dashboard of your life that you need to get your life right. The reason this world is in fear and some folks who have fallen away from the Lord is because there is sin in their life. That's why they have to protect themselves. It is a signal to attempt to some problems that needs fixing before the engine of the heart overheats. All Vancouver, all British Columbia, all Canada, this virus that is doing whatever it's doing is a warning sign from the God that you will have a sin issue in your life, that your heart is corrupted and God is giving you a chance to repent in this hour and come to his kingdom. It is like that warning sign that is keep on showing, showing on your dashboard of your car and if you ignore it, your engine will burn out and your engine will die and the car that you're driving will be to no good. And I can tell you that that engine is your soul and that vessel, that car, is this flesh that you live in. God is calling us to a higher place. Amen. When you saw the Holy Spirit and you, He set you free, then you can help those who have similar problems, encourage them effectively in what you have learned in the Holy Ghost. King David was telling all of us in verse 4 what he has learned. Do not be afraid of sticking your neck out for God. Do not be afraid for sticking your neck out for God. 
it is true that turtles never make any progress until they stick their neck out of their shell. <laughs> you want to talk about lockdowns and hideaways? They become a nice little turtles that are not moving anywhere. <laughs> because they're not willing to stick their neck out. Why does the turtle not stick the neck out? Because it's afraid of his life. Yes. Doesn't want to be eaten. It's protecting itself in that shell. Yes. And God is saying to us, we don't need to be afraid of anything. That's right. If we stick our neck out, He will protect us. We don't need to cover ourselves in the shells of life. We need to cover ourselves in the glory of the kingdom of God, which is at hand. Amen. For those who have the tendency and want to feel... Hallelujah, help me Jesus. For those who have the tendency to want to feel and play it safe all the time, King David wrote this. The Lord is my light and my deliverer. Whom then shall I fear? The Lord is my strength of my life. Then whom shall I be afraid? You do not need to play it safe. You do not need to feel warm and cuddly because the Lord is your help and He is your shelter. You shall not fear nothing for the Lord is with you. Hallelujah. Amen. Speak about his word stop talking about what the enemy is doing what the government is doing whatever start professing the word of god he is real he is working in your life instead of being afraid of what others are might thinking or others might be saying we have talked for too many years about what everybody else is saying and doing and what everybody is thinking about us. And God is saying, I had enough. Hey, did I die on the cross for you or not? Speak about me. Glorify me. Give me some pulpit time for a change instead of giving Satan the pulpit time that he wants. Amen. We get people in church Sunday after Sunday, Monday after Monday, Tuesday after Tuesday. We keep on telling them how the enemy is after us. <laughs> and God is saying, I have overcome this world. Stop talking about it. Look unto me that I am your redeemer. Enough is enough. Is he Lord or not? We need to worship him. As it says in chapter, in the third chapter of the book of 1 Peter, verse 14 to 16. This is what the scripture tells us, if we are doing things right. But even in case you should suffer for the sake of righteousness, you are blessed. It says, you might not be, but you might be. Even, even if you might be suffering for the sake of righteousness, you are blessed. The key word here is for the sake of righteousness. Yeah. Not for your sake. Not for your wants. Not for your likes and dislikes. For his sake. Yeah. If you suffer for his sake, then you are blessed. Yeah. Do not dread or be afraid of their threats, nor be disturbed by their opposition. Church of the living God, people of Vancouver, I'm here to declare to you that God says, do not be, do not dread or be afraid of the threats or disturbed by their opposition. The Lord is with us. But if your hearts are set on Christ, verse 15, but in your hearts set Christ apart as holy and acknowledge him as Lord, always be ready to give a logical defense to anyone who asks you to account for the hope that is in you, but do it curiously and respectfully. What does that mean really? It means you need to know your word. It means that you need to live in the Word. It means that you need to be aligned to the Word of God. It means that you need to be consuming the Word of God. You need to be eating the Word of God day and night, night and day. That's what he's talking about. He says, be ready to tell people why you have this hope. Be ready 
to be quoting Psalms 91 of your heart. Not say, let me look at the scripture where this, what the scripture says that you have hidden the word of God and say why you are standing in this hour without fear. Because Psalms 91 is living in you, through you, and in you, and you can't give an account, a logical account to anybody that will hear you. That's what the scripture is telling us. He says we have to be ready at all times. Amen. We have to be ready at all times. And we need to be giving an account for our hope. Amen. And verse 16 says, And see it to it that your conscience is entirely calm and unimpaired. Mm -hmm. So that when you are falsely accused as evildoers, those who threaten you obviously reveal your right behavior in Christ may come to shame of slandering your good lives. Jesus is telling us we ought to live a righteous life. We ought to live a righteous life. It's all right, I got you guys, don't worry. I know you guys are needing some sunshine because you're all growing up. <laughs> that, that's praise God. <laughs> praise God. You know, sorry. What's going on? They cannot hear me. All right, you know what? We'll just shift everybody over. It's all right. We shift everybody. Go over everybody. Don't worry. It's fine. We all shift over. We all shift over over there. It's okay. The church, the tabernacle of God is movable. The tabernacle of God is not stationary. Amen. The tabernacle of God goes wherever He wants us to be. Let's just shift. It's all right. Let, let, let's let's just shift because you know what? I understand people are cold and we understand all of these things. God is in control. We don't need to worry about nothing else. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. You see, that's why I said on Friday, God wants us to build. God is building a tabernacle. He's not building a temple. Because a temple, you couldn't move them. But a tabernacle is movable. A tabernacle is shiftable for the glory of the Lord. Hallelujah. Omar, you might need to take this over there. Just move it a little bit. Sorry. It's all right. You guys can stay in the sun, I stay in the cold. You stand in the shower, you, you set the fire while I bring the fire. <laughs> Sorry? Uh, no, that's all right. That, that, that's, that, that, that one's working? Oh, okay. Yes, can you please help to? Yes, yes. We can put them all over here, over this side. That's all right. That's all right. I'm hot anyways. I need the cold. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, go help him, go help him. Thank you. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. I got 15 minutes. I got 15 minutes. That's all right. Oh, sorry? No, I don't have the whole hour because we got to go to Chill Like. They're waiting for us in Chill Like too. So I got 15, 20 minutes. Praise God. That's all right. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Peter tells us in his word, he says to us, Peter says to us in his word, in, in, in the scripture, he says, but we should, we should not be afraid of any kind of suffering that might come to us. We should not be dreading any kind of threat that is coming towards us. We should be putting our hearts in Christ in the holy acknowledgement of who he is and always be ready to give an answer for who we are. But then he goes further and says to us that our conscious, our entirely, our entirely must be clear and unpaired, un, unimpaired. So that when you are falsely accused as the evildoers, those who threaten you obviously, abusively, sorry, those who threaten you abusively and reveal you right behavior, in Christ may come to shame of slandering your good lives. What Jesus is saying here to us, what the Word of God is saying through His Apostle, He's saying to us that we shall have a renewed mind in Christ Jesus, that we are transformed by Him, that we are renewed by Him, that we do not think the way the world thinks, that we should have a clear conscience that we are not living a life, double life, double minded life, that we live a pure and holy life according to His righteousness. 
That's what the scripture is telling us. That when the people come and threaten us and abuse us and try to attack us, that we will be able to stand in the right behavior in Christ, that they will be ashamed of their slanders, of the good life that we live according to His will and purpose. The reason people are afraid and hiding is because the conscience is not clear. They have too many skeletons in the closet. That's why they are afraid to come out. You are afraid to come out because you have too many skeletons in the closet. And when you have too many skeletons in the closet, you have to hide away. Because it will be shun and will be shown to all men. But Jesus says, if you live a life that is clear and is honorable and is perfect according to the life of Jesus Christ, nobody can accuse you. And if they do, he will put them to shame because you are doing my will. King David wrote, even though I walk to the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Jesus is with us. Jesus is walking with us. I'm not here to say whether there is people going to die from any kind of pandemic or whatever they want to call it. I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to tell you whether it is true or whether it is false. The Lord is with us. Though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, He shall deliver me. His staff and His rod shall comfort me. I am not afraid of death because He is with me. And this is what we need to preach to the, to, the, to the world. This is what we need to preach to Christians that they need to start learning that the Lord is with us and the Lord is comforting us. We will not be afraid of anything. In everything we give thanks unto the Lord Jesus Christ. Because you know what church? My brothers, my sisters, 2020 and 2021 was a setup of God to bring us to a table that He has prepared before our enemies. That He will let us sit down at the table, at the banquet table that He has prepared for us. And He will sit in front of our enemies and He will start anointing us and pouring up His holy oil upon us. And they cannot touch us, they cannot to come near us because He says that you did my will, you were not afraid of anything, but in everything you trusted in me and you walk with me. Thank you, director. He's telling me, don't get too close to the speaker because something will happen. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. He is taking us through a journey through the valley of shadow of death. What is this valley of shadow of death? Persecution. Rejection. Hateful behavior to those who are free and free indeed in Jesus Christ. To those who believe that He is able to do exceedingly above all things that we ever ask or hope for. This is what we're facing in this hour. Our powers of, of, of struggle in this hour is not just against the world, it's also against the religious spirit that is running this world. Alongside with Jezebel. May I suggest to you today that Ahab was part of the nation of Israel, but he made a covenant with Jezebel, who was the one that was totally against God and his kingdom. Anyone, any church that makes an alignment with the will of the government is aligning themselves with the spirit of Jezebel. And they will try to kill the prophets, the voice of God in this hour. But I have good news for you. We are walking through it. His staff and his rod is comforting us. He is taking us to a table that he has prepared before our enemies. And he will anoint us 
and while we're eating, while we're eating at the table, in the banquet table that Jesus Christ has prepared for us, I'm here to declare to you that we still continue saying day in and day out, surely goodness and mercy shall follow all the days of my life. Not some days, but all the days. And you and I can testify this morning that surely goodness and mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ has been following us from the time that they said there is a pandemic, which there is no pandemic, by the way, but I'm just saying it for what they say. I don't believe there's a pandemic. There is just a virus, whatever is going on, just like any other flu. But whatever they say, whatever they say, I don't care what they're saying. All I care is what God is saying. God says in his word, a thousand shall fall on one side and ten thousand shall fall on the other side. But if you're washed in my blood, if you're covered in my glory, nothing can touch you. All you will be, be just a bystander. And I can tell you that you can testify of that, that surely goodness and mercy has been following you since 2020 and is continuing following you and it was continuing to be following you in 2019 and the years before and that's why you're here because you know that his goodness has been following you all the days of your life. Thank God for his assurance of comfort, care, and protection from all kinds of eternal and external evil. Trust the Lord to take you through whatever valley you may be passing through at this time. Do not look for a detour around the valleys that the Lord wants you to pass through. For if you do, God will keep putting these situations in your path until you learn to trust Him to take you through it all. Be more like King David. The church needs to rise up and resurrect. And to become more like King David, how he resided in Psalms 23. Psalms 23 was not written for funeral services. We read Psalms 23 at funeral services. It wasn't written for funeral services. It was written for the living. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. It wasn't talking about the dead. The dead don't need the Lord to be your shepherd. They're going to go either to hell or they go to heaven. But the living need a shepherd that will guide their life. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. That's what we need to understand in this hour. We read Psalm 23 only on the funeral services. We read it. Because he says, no, I walk through the valley of shadow of death. Can I say that the shadow of death is right here? The shadow of death is on this earth. Because of sin, that is the shadow of death. Because the scripture tells us, I got a total new understanding last night when I was praying about this. The Lord says, the shadow of death is right here on earth because this thing, the, the wages of sin is death. So before we die in our flesh and go to eternal hell, if we do not have Jesus Christ, the shadow of that is death right here on the ground. It's the valley of shadow of death. We walking amongst dead people who are living in sin. The world wants to hear some news. Here's your news world. You are in a pandemic since the creation of Adam and Eve fall. It caused sin. You're dying daily. You're dying in your lust. You're dying in your drunkenness. You're dying in your drugs. You're dying in your promiscuous lifestyle. You're dying in everything that is ungodly and you do not care and the news is not warning you about it and not telling you that you are on your way to an eternal death that there is no return from it. But they just tell you about some mini Mickey Mouse kindergarten virus that is curable then magnify it so that we can put fear in the lives of people but on this resurrection sunday i'm here to declare that the lord jesus christ says i am with you if you trust me if you walk with me if you call call upon my name i will direct your life